All right, so this morning I have read uh, The Port Chicago 50 by Steve uh, Scheinkin, Scheinkin. Um, good book. I don't really have much to say on it. Um, it's about, it is a nonfiction uh, retelling of the um, Port Chicago incident during World War II um, in which 50 uh, African-American naval soldiers were tried and convicted of mutiny. Um, and from a civilian standpoint and from a very logic standpoint, this is obviously just a mistrial and a, a trial that it has a lot of basis in racial issues at the time um and then the navy like much of american government entities refusing to admit that they were wrong um that's really the big takeaway um this retelling of it has a pretty large focus on um Joe Smalls, who is um, really looked at as the, the leader of things, but really it's just that he's, it just happens to be the person who has a lot of natural leadership ability and who people went to before this incident and then after this incident. Um, the Port Chicago incident really stems from a a few weeks earlier in which um while loading one of the ships that was um full of ammunition and some live explosives something went off the two ships blew up um and sent seismic waves and and killed 500 men i think was the about the number given um the issue is is that number one although the naval the american navy was admitting african-american soldiers um they were all enlisted as mess workers on ships or they were enlisted in places like uh, Port Chicago, uh, which is just a manufacturing plant, effectively, and just is there for them to load ships uh, with ammunition and supplies. So that's, there's already a pretty obvious racial issue going on there. Um, the, the, the other issue that comes from this is the fact that, um, during training, because the training was segregated and they often did not train African American soldiers in the same way, many African, these specific soldiers did not get any sort of training on how to actually handle ammunition um, and, and handle explosives. So they're doing an incredibly dangerous job with absolutely no training whatsoever. Um, and the Navy just kind of sees, like, it is what it is, um, and gives no respect to these African American lives. Um, so this initial two ships had blow up, um, which causes a very, very real fear of going back out and rehandling ammunitions w under the same circumstances with no changes whatsoever um and if if anything the only changes that happened were the navy said the navy in their official report said this happened because african-american workers cannot be trusted and then they sent it back out there to do the same job right it's just a clear showing of how 
little care there was, and there still is, towards African American lives. Um, so then they effect, eventually get to this order of not, of like they're, they're gonna start working again at a new port, at a new port, not at new port, at a new port. Um, and they follow all their orders. Um, and as they're given the order column left, which basically just means that they shift their entire column to turn left and start marching towards where the ships are, they stop, most of them then refuse to go load ammunition. Um, and because of that, and then because of the ensuing circumstances, um, 50 men are then charged with mutiny. Um, the trial's a complete sham. I mean, it, it is, there's, I don't think there's anything, anything to say about that. Um, yeah, and then throughout life, the 50 men, none of them are ever given a chance to uh, get rid of this charge that's against them, uh, because every single step of the way, the Navy says, we, we don't even want to look at these findings. Um, it doesn't matter how, how good these people are afterwards, we just don't want to look at these findings at all. So that's that. Um, there's a lot of clear, pretty clear backpedaling from the, the US Navy after uh, this story really gets out and about the treatment of these 50 people. Uh, these 15, these 15, 50 uh, navy officer, uh, navy workers, and they do a lot of backpedaling, of of really shortening their sentences and just letting them serve out um, as regulars, as regular navy workers, instead of having them be in uh, be in jail and doing hard labor. But like it's. It's, it's just very clear that there's just a lot of other things that are going on here. Um, especially from an outside pr perspective, I don't have any military experience. Um, none of my direct family has any sort of direct military experience, and I'm willing to admit that. Um, but looking at this, it's very clear that it's not mutiny. Uh, from an outside perspective. Um, however, I guess if you want to look at this from a very Navy perspective and a very militarized perspective, it, what they did in the end is they disobey an order. And like that's, that's the key charge here is that they just disobey and they just refuse to take an order um, of go load ammunition. And that's the kind of key thing that gets brought up time and time again. Um, on a very technical standpoint, the the thing that they disobey is column left, which then in turn is like the, the I think that that's, that's the entire backbone of this of why the Navy can get away with this is that because technically the order to load ammunitions was never officially given. Uh, the order that they disobey is column left, which then shows, to them shows that there is some mass organization behind the scenes that none of them, none of them are willing to admit to, which is just a shame. It's, it's a sham. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, really, the, I mean, the court martial is an absolute sham. But um, really, really nice story, um, told in a really, really interesting way. Um, it's kind of biography because it kind of goes in the life of, of Joe Smalls and some of the other major players in this. But you know, 
they deserve justice and they're never going to get it because unfortunately all of them are now passed and uh, the U.S. Navy is never going to want to admit that they were ever wrong about something. That's just, that's just what it is. And yeah, that is the uh, Poor Chicago 50 by Steve Schenken. Um, I don't know, a solid six and a half out of ten. Um, oh, one final interesting thing is that I, I got this book from the children's section in a Barnes & Noble. I don't think it should have been there. I don't think it's, 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 I think it's a little bit older than that. Um, but it's what it is.